arid Kalahari Namib ecosystem of southern Africa, we find an introduced woody tree or shrub, commonly known as prosopis or mesquite, which has become invasive and is spreading to the detriment of the environment and local biota. Several species of this tree were introduced into Botswana, Namibia and parts of South Africa from America and Mexico some as early as the 1880s. Farmers liked the trees for the shade they could provide and children liked to eat the pods for their sweet taste. A downside to the eating of the pods however is that it can also lead to constipation. As these trees would grow in arid areas where no other tree can survive Numerous trees were planted in this dryland ecosystem to stabilize sand dunes and as a source of shade, fuel wood and fodder. And they spread rapidly throughout the broader Kalahari Namib ecosystem. Unfortunately, they have now lost much of their popularity because of their invasive tendencies. It causes loss of soil moisture and increasingly drier conditions leading to land degradation and desertification, as well as loss of biodiversity resulting in change in habitats and even local extinction of species. It provides a refuge for feral animal populations and weeds, and it damages environmentally sensitive areas such as watercourses. It forms dense thickets which, when combined with its large thorns, prevent livestock from reaching water holes. When the thorns penetrate one's skin, this can also lead to infection. The thorns also cause lacerations in livestock, affecting both large and small stock, reducing the quality and market value of the animals. And communities report that when livestock eat too much of the pods, the toxicity of an increased number of pods can have detrimental effects. Because of its deep root system, it reaches and absorbs valuable water resources. In this way, it destroys grasslands and important plants whose strong roots keep the soil together. During consultations with community members, they highlighted the spread of prosopis as an issue, encouraging the governments and stakeholders working in the Kalahari Namib to give them the knowledge, skills and tools to control and manage the mesquite. We have a responsibility to balance the management and control with the needs of the rural communities living in these areas who still derive value from the mesquite for firewood, shade and fodder for their livestock. In these dryland areas where livelihood opportunities are limited to employment with government institutions like schools, the post office, hospitals and police. Alternative options must also be considered in any management and control. We asked some of them how they felt about the possible eradication of the invader plant. My name is Frederick Titus. I am the representative from the, for the area Boxpitz and Streisendam. Uh, what I can just tell you about the prosopis. It has been brought here uh, by us as members of the community in order to stabilize the soil. Because previously, uh, before in, in, in the early 80s, our area was vast and was bare and there was very little plants. So we planted these trees with a view to stabilize the soil and currently it has invaded the area so much that we now find it might be a problem. There is need that we should try to utilize in one way or the other. We have made some benchmarking and we have observed that the tree has, has got a very deep root system. And we have also observed that it's evergreen in most cases. And so therefore, uh, we can use it for a variety of, of aspects. Some of the people feel we have to eradicate it. And if we eradicate, 
we should do it selectively so that we avoid the situation whereby the animals would graze and probably uh, transplant the trees maybe into the, 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 the rangelands. The, the Prosopis is a good tree. It is a windbreaker in our area. It is also, we can also have fodder out of its pots. And it is also a good tree for shade. And for the community, I think for where the community can benefit out of it is whenever you cut it down, you can make poles out of some of the thumbs of the, of the, of the prosopis. You can also do furniture like that. And we can also use prosopis for firewood. Die pits het ek mis reeds hier gekom kry. Toe was die pits werkend gewees. Want al die mense het altyd by die pits water gekeen. Daarna had die pits, die bomme, die pits kom toegegroe. Dat met die pits niks meer gewerk is nie. Dat die manne reik, nou kort die pits, die bomme kom uitgeroe het, hier uitgegroe het. Soos jy hulle sien, daar leel hulle word ook al droog en hulle die pits water had, dat hulle die dieren nou water geer met die pits. Isaac Mohali is a local farmer who is experiencing problems with his water supply. All of the river beds have dried up on his farm and a year ago what took him 15 minutes to pump now takes more than an hour because the prosopis trees have blocked his wells. Food for his livestock has also become a problem. In the past, rangelands had sufficient grass, but with a rapid spread of the prosopis, it is now dry land. It is good to see that the majority of the people living in these arid regions will have no problem with the eradication of prosopis. Some have requested that they should be allowed to keep one or more trees. It was a privilege for us to have heard their opinions and taking all their suggestions into account we shall plan our operation with the utmost care using every available modern method. <laughs>